Yeah, what I'm saying is, look, they tried to medicate me. They, I was exhausted. They wrongly diagnosed me. And they, 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 when I asked them, how much lithium did you want to put me on exactly? It took them four days to answer because they were embarrassed. So I got ahead of schedule and I bounced. And I didn't tell anybody where I was going. The whole time, they're trying to convince me I'm insane. They were trying to get me to take psychotic medication. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I happen to notice one of your specialty items. Did you drink this whole thing today? Yes. No. So it's high time we did a deep dive into this disturbing Wendy Williams case because it's raising some serious red flags. Now, remember when Kanye West went on that epic rant shining a light on these Hollywood handlers who he claimed were trying to pump him full of meds? Well, it looks like Wendy might be caught in a similar storm. Wendy's loyal fans are buzzing with speculation, suggesting that these Hollywood handlers are playing some seriously shady games, possibly even trying to poison Wendy and ruin any possibility of her recovery. Now here's where it gets even more sinister. Word on the street is that Wendy's effectively being held hostage by the very same people who threw her under financial guardianship. And get this, this new documentary on Wendy might be part of their scheme to paint her as unstable and in desperate need of a guardian. And then there's Kanye, dropping bombshells left and right, suggesting that the Hollywood higher-ups might be trying to silence Wendy because she's got the tea on some seriously powerful industry players. So you all probably remember how Kanye exposed his former personal trainer Harley Pasternak for trying to medicate him and put him into an institution? And can we just take a moment to process how absolutely insane that whole situation was? For some reason, the media seemed to just breeze past the fact that a trainer openly threatened an A-list celebrity, and what's even crazier is that Harley Pasternak's career didn't seem to take a hit at all. But see, Kanye isn't the only one allegedly caught in the crosshairs of these rumored Hollywood handlers. Dave Chappelle, Martin Lawrence, Britney Spears, Amanda Bynes, Aaron Carter, and countless others reportedly found themselves themselves coerced into taking meds they didn't need, and tragically, some of them paid the ultimate price for it. Now in Wendy's case, her bank froze her assets before they even had solid proof she couldn't handle them. And when you consider that Wendy's entire career was built on fearlessly calling out industry shadiness, well, it starts to smell fishy, doesn't it? Sure, Wendy had her messy moments, but she was also unapologetically bold, calling out everyone from celebs to politicians, and she usually had the receipts to back it up. This whole situation feels like a coordinated effort to make us believe Wendy's lost her marbles. Also, nobody would bat an eye at the financial conservatorship they slapped on her. But here's the burning question. What exactly did Kanye West spill about Wendy allegedly being poisoned by her handlers? And even more crucially, who are these shadowy figures paying these handlers and pulling the strings behind the scenes? Let's connect the dots. That's right, you understand that if I had taken the medication, I would not be here and it would have been, woe is, he was deeply troubled, we miss him, we love his music though. So this new Lifetime documentary about Wendy Williams really painted her as a hopeless case. But it's pretty wild to think that not too long ago, Wendy seemed completely together. But as soon as she stood up to her bank Wells Fargo, she suddenly diagnosed with dementia, slapped with a guardian who controls all her finances. And to add to the drama, reports have surfaced, alleging that the judge overseeing Wendy's guardianship was under investigation for taking bribes. According to a report from WABC, Manhattan Judge Lisa Sokoloff was under scrutiny for six whole months after being accused of accepting bribes from guardianship lawyers. And guess what? This is the same judge who appointed attorney Sabrina Morrissey as Wendy's financial guardian after Wells Fargo froze her accounts back in 2022. So the news about Wendy's dementia diagnosis came just a few days after that Lifetime documentary aired on February 24th. But here's where it gets interesting. Wendy's fans were quick to notice the suspicious timing of it all. See, Wells Fargo reportedly froze Wendy's assets a whopping two years before she officially received her diagnosis. Now let's rewind to 2022 when out of the blue, Wells Fargo drops the bombshell that Wendy's incapable of handling her finances. They even went as far as filing a request at the New York Supreme Court asking for a temporary guardian to step in and take control of Wendy's money. However, Wendy and her legal team fired back, pointing fingers at Wendy's former financial 
financial advisor, Lori Schiller. Allegedly, Lori fed Wells Fargo a bunch of nonsense about Wendy being incapacitated, a campaign Lori allegedly kicked off after Wendy fired her over some shady business with her accounts. Wendy's lawyer also filed for a temporary restraining order against Wells Fargo, arguing that the bank had no right to block Wendy from accessing her financial records. But check this out, the judge ended up siding with Wells Fargo, and by December 2022, word got out that attorney Sabrina Morrissey had been appointed as Wendy's financial guardian. However, Wendy still wasn't giving up. She raised a ruckus about Lori Schiller and Wells Fargo, publicly calling them out for scheming to stick her under guardianship. And here's the kicker, when you actually listen to Wendy talk, she's as sharp as they come. No signs of speech troubles or anything hinting at being incapacitated. And when I began asking questions about my money, suddenly Lori Schiller has got no response regarding my money. I want my money, this is not fair. And Wells Fargo has no questions and answers with regarding my money. This is, this is not fair. And Lori Schiller and Wells Fargo have this guardianship petition about keeping me away from my money. And this guy named Bernie Young, I know for a fact that Bernie Young used my American Express card to hire an attorney to file a petition against me. That was done with my American Express card. A former doctor had medical information about me that I never even got. It was sent over to Lori Schiller. I fired the doctor and again, all I want to know is where is my money? This is not right. Now, Wendy's reps are spinning a tale that she only received the dementia diagnosis fairly recently, and supposedly, that's what prompted her to pump the brakes on her talk show. But hold up a second. Wendy's family isn't buying it. In fact, her son, Kevin Jr., directly accused certain members of Wendy's team of pushing her to knock back drinks and then sneaking documents and contracts her way to sign while she was under the influence. If they aren't providing it, they are definitely enabling a type of personality and giving her the green light to drink, Kevin Jr. said. Once I heard that she was agreeing to stuff around her rehab, I thought, well, okay, they are taking advantage. So if these people were really pushing Wendy, a recovering alcoholic, to drink, then who's to say they also didn't push her to take some meds she didn't need? It's not like that would be unheard of in Hollywood. Take Britney Spears' situation, for example. She exposed people who put her under the conservatorship of conspiring with doctors to take her off her regular meds and put her on a high dose of lithium, a powerful medication used to treat mood disorders such as mania and bipolar disorder. Taking high doses of lithium is extremely dangerous and in some cases it can lead to coma, brain damage, or even death. So get this, during her conservatorship hearing in 2021, Brittany revealed that her team and the doctor who was on their payroll put her on a high dose of lithium just because she refused to do a single dance move. When I said no to one dance move into rehearsals, um, it was as if I planted a huge bomb. Um, somewhere and I, I said no I don't want to do it this way after that my management and my dancers and my assistant of the new people that were supposed to do the new show all went into a room shut the door and didn't come out for at least 45 minutes ma'am I'm not here to be anyone's slave I can say no to a dance move yes my therapist sat me down in a room and said he had a million phone calls about how I was not cooperating in rehearsals and I haven't been taking my medication all of this was a false. He uh, he immediately the next day put me on lithium out of nowhere. He took me off my normal meds I'd been on for five years. And lithium is a very, very strong um, and completely different medication compared to what I was used to. You can go mentally impaired if you take if you stay on it longer than five months. But Britney's case wasn't an isolated one. Apparently, these rumored Hollywood handlers love pushing lithium and other powerful meds on people, and Kanye West claimed they tried the same thing on him. Allegedly, there were at least two separate attempts to put Kanye under a conservatorship, and both times Kanye claimed he was given some medication that he didn't even recognize. So back in 2016, Kanye had this incident while he was hanging out with his old personal trainer, Harley Pasternak. Now, when things started getting out of hand, Pasternak got in touch with Kanye's personal doctor at the time, Dr. Farzam, and told him to come over. But here's where it gets a bit sketchy. Before Dr. Farzam even set foot in Pasternak's place, he picked up the phone and dialed 911, claiming Kanye was acting all erratic and needed to be hospitalized. I'm actually uh, one of his doctors. I'm just calling for my cell phone to request if we can have some police backup, because uh, I don't think the paramedics, you know, the you police. can bring both. I, 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 yeah, because yeah, I think he definitely is going to need to be hospitalized, so I wouldn't just do the police by itself. That's 
or in the area, no other, no, no other way. But wait, why was this doctor so dead set on Kanye needing hospitalization before even laying eyes on him? Is this something Harley ordered him to do? Anyway, fast forward to 2022 when Kanye went on that whole spree, exposing the people who pull the strings in the entertainment business and shining a light on these Hollywood handlers. He received this shocking message from Harley Pasternak, demanding to see him in person, or else he'd ship him off to Zombieland again. One of a couple ways. First, you and I sit down and have a loving and open conversation, but you don't use cuss words. And everything that is discussed is based in fact, and that's some crazy stuff that a dumb friend of yours told you or you saw on a tweet. Second option, I have you institutionalized again where they medicate the crap out of you and you go back to zombie land forever. Play date, play date with the kids just won't be the same. This is the way a Hollywood a Hollywood trainer was talking to me. On another note, fans dug up some interesting info. Before Harley made a name for himself as a Hollywood trainer, he actually worked for the Canadian government. He was apparently stationed at a military facility researching various psychological operations aimed at shaping human behavior. A Twitter user put together a series of tweets about Harley, highlighting his connections to several celebrities who either experienced mental breakdowns or passed away in suspicious circumstances. And among those mentioned were Mac Miller and Brittany Murphy. I'm actually uh, one of his doctors, I'm just calling for my cell phone to request if we can have some police backup because uh, I don't think the paramedics, you know, the you police. can bring both. I, 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 yeah, because yeah, I think he's definitely going to need to be hospitalized, so I wouldn't just do the police by itself. I think it's or in the area. You know, no, no other way. This role gave him the liberty to research these substances without worrying about legal consequences. Physiology and nutrition got recruited by the military to uh, help run essentially the superhuman lab, this, this laboratory. Uh, called the Defense and Civil Institute of Environmental Medicine. And the area of that I was interested in was how drugs and food affect muscular performance. And well, when you say drugs, are they like performance enhancing drugs? Are they all, all kinds of drugs? Right. Okay. So working for the military, I wasn't governed by the same laws that the typical person was. So I could look at the impact of certain drugs that are not that are not everyday things. Now, when Kanye later discussed Harley's threats with the paparazzi, he claimed that this was precisely the role Hollywood handlers are assigned when celebrities try to free themselves from control. This is a trainer, but come to find out, he was actually Canadian intelligence, but this is my trainer. So this shows you the kind of handlers that are around the superstars of California. Kanye also mentioned that he was directed to attend anger management sessions, where he was prescribed some medication he didn't recognize. And later, a separate doctor informed him that this medication had possibly triggered his episode in 2016. They sent me this anger management class, and then the guy just gave me some medication. He's like, yo, take this. I had never taken medication in my entire life. And one doctor said he started like this, this slope or something. But wait, there's more to the story. During another interview, Kanye dropped a bombshell that he was given an abnormally high dose of lithium following his hospitalization. And when the interviewer hinted that they were trying to Britney Spears him, Kanye said they were actually trying to take him out, much like they did with Michael Jackson. He says, look, they tried to medicate me. They, I was exhausted. They wrongly diagnosed me. And they, 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 when I asked them, how much lithium did you want to put me on exactly? It took them four days to answer because they were embarrassed about the amount, right? And I refused to take this, right? You understand that if I had taken the medication, I would not be here and it would have been, woe is, he was deeply troubled. We miss him. We love his music, though. Well, they would have Britney Spears, too. I mean, look at they would have Michael Jackson or, or worse, yeah. So look, <laughs> guess, what, guess what they did. Look at what they did to Britney. When she went in, she was tired, she was exhausted, yeah. she was in a bad way. But ten years of that medication wrecked her brain. You can see. Thankfully, Kanye stood his ground and refused to take the medication. But Britney Spears wasn't as fortunate. See, during her conservatorship, she didn't have the freedom to make medical choices without her dad Jamie's say so. As a result, she was forced to take those high doses of lithium. Britney revealed during her 2021 conservatorship hearing that lithium had a profound impact on her mental state and totally messed her up to the point that she was no longer able to engage in regular conversations. You can go mentally impaired if you take too much, if you stay on it longer than five months. But he put me on that and I felt drunk. I really couldn't even take up for myself. 
I couldn't even have a conversation with my mom or dad really about anything. I told them I was scared and I, my doctor had me on six different nurses with this new medication, come to my home, stay with me, to monitor me on this new medication, which I never wanted to be on to begin with. There were six different nurse, nurses in my homes and they wouldn't let me get in my car to go anywhere for, for a month. Not only did my family not do a goddamn thing, my dad was all for it. Anything that happened to me had to be approved by my dad. Following this revelation, fans started to theorize that Britney may have been off lithium when she addressed the court in 2021, as she appeared coherent and articulate. However, after expressing her desire to conduct an interview and reveal the truth, her handlers likely resumed medicating her, which could explain why we haven't heard her speak publicly since her conservatorship ended. But here's another disturbing similarity between Britney and Kanye's circumstances. It involves Lou Taylor, the woman who allegedly orchestrated Britney's conservatorship. Lou Taylor gained public recognition in early 2008 when she served as the spokesperson for Britney's parents, Jamie and Lynn Spears. And according to Lynn's memoir, Taylor was the one who proposed the idea of conservatorship to Britney's father, Jamie, shortly after Britney was placed on the 5150 involuntary code in January 2008. As January 22nd approached, according to Lynn, Lynn's tell-all, Lou Taylor and Britney's father felt God telling them to wait, saying quiet plans had been underway for six weeks for Jamie to petition the court for temporary conservatorship of Britney. But it seemed like an impossible dream at that point, with Sam still so entrenched in her life. In fact, Jamie was going to file for the conservatorship on January 22nd, eight days beforehand, but he and his business manager, Lou, felt God leading them to wait, fast and pray, despite the frustration of a phalanx of lawyers. But just one week week after, everything came to a boiling point. To add to the mix, not long after Britney's conservatorship was officially terminated, Britney's lawyer revealed that Lou Taylor had pocketed a sum of at least $18 million from Britney's estate during the time of her conservatorship. Now let's dig into Kanye's ex-wife Kim Kardashian and her ties with Lou Taylor because there were a lot of rumors swirling around during Kim and Kanye's divorce that Kim was trying to become Kanye's conservator with Lou's help. So if you were around during the Free Britney movement, you might have noticed that the Car Jenners kept oddly quiet about Britney's situation. Even Kim, who's been pushing this whole I want to be a lawyer because I care about human rights narrative, stayed completely silent on Britney's case. Well, it didn't take long for fans to connect the dots and figure out why Kim and her clan were tight-lipped about Britney's situation. Turns out Lou Taylor has some serious business ties with various members of the Car Jenner crew. According to Page Six, Lou and her company TriStar Sports and Entertainment Group were previously linked to entities like King Kylie LLC, King Kylie Holdings, and KKW Fragrance. Page Page Six also pointed out that in the summer of 2021, just months before Britney's conservatorship came to an end, Lou Taylor's name mysteriously vanished from the Car Jenner business filings, including those for KKW Fragrance and Kendall Jenner Inc. However, Lou's company, TriStar, was still listed as the address for mailing purposes. Besides that, surface documents from Kim and Kanye's divorce proceedings showed that Lou Taylor was in charge of Kim's trust fund. Anyway, after his controversial 2020 presidential rally, Kanye went public accusing Kim and Chris of trying to have him locked up. He said, Kim was trying to fly to Wyoming with a doctor to lock me up like on the movie Get Out because I cried about saving my daughter's life yesterday. In a later tweet, Kanye claimed that he was the one who made the first move to file for divorce and he went on to allege that Kim and Chris tried to place him under the 5150 hold. Oh, and by the way, as recently as November 2023, Kanye claimed that the rumored handler Harley Pasternak was still following him around. Kanye even shared a video of Harley searching for for him at his hotel in Dubai, and Kanye's team expressed serious concern about Harley's motives and intentions. But wait, there's more. During his speech at the listening party in Dubai, Kanye leveled an accusation against Harley, alleging his involvement in the death of 90s pop star Aaron Carter. No, no, no here with no Instagram, nobody living, nobody at, and I don't want to hear shit from none of these Jewish talk about, oh, he's in an episode. Harley passing, they follow me to the hell. The nigga care, kill Aaron Carter, and now they acting like they won't care, uh, clear the Backstreet Boy sample. You get what I'm saying? Harley passing that pusher, your trainer. Harley passing that, Jay-Z.
On November 5th, 2022, Aaron tragically drowned in his bathtub, allegedly due to the substances he took and the official ruling stated that his death was accidental. But here's where it gets eerie. Just one day before his passing, Aaron posted this tweet, Yo Kanye, let's talk man to man. Fans were alarmed, and rightfully so, with one commenting on Aaron's post, Yo, if this don't have you realizing that everything Kanye been saying about Harley and Handlers are real, I don't know what to say. This is scary. We've got to question how a celebrity who couldn't be controlled died. We need answers. This is wild, crazy. He's now dead. He wanted to talk. And another person wrote, My guess is that Aaron saw Kanye's posts about the handler, Harley, and wanted to talk to him about it. Aaron had a lot of mental issues that very well could be linked to the industry. Aaron may have made some correlations, and they wanted to silence him. By the way, Kanye himself later claimed in an interview that Aaron was taken out because he tried to expose Harley Pasternak. That way, if they did... Um, attempt to kill me or kill me like they killed Michael Jackson or JFK, uh, then, or uh, Aaron, what is the guy's name? Aaron Carter, the guy who wanted to talk to me uh, uh, about the Harley passing next situation. If they did do that, they would say, oh, it's Ye's mental health, so. So as you can see, there are so many bizarre coincidences surrounding this situation, and you don't need to be a conspiracy theorist to notice the striking parallels between Wendy Williams' case and the experiences of celebrities like Kanye, Britney, and others who have allegedly been subjected to medication against their will. Fans are now buzzing with speculation, suggesting that Wendy may have been irreversibly impacted by the meds forced upon her, and they're concerned that her handlers might prevent her from speaking out about her guardianship situation. As for their alleged motives, well, besides the financial exploitation, there's also the fact that Wendy was the queen of the gossip scene for ages, dishing out the dirt on celebrities and other influential figures. So it's not entirely far-fetched to entertain the idea that some of these figures might want to silence her. One fan wrote, All truth, I applaud ye for speaking out, and Britney, she needs to be kidnapped back and helped. However, how do you fight those higher-ups? I'm sure they got her to sign something, without her knowledge. I feel bad for her. Also, those diagnoses seem incorrect. Forced drug-induced mental disorder with obvious physical ailments. The swelling of the feet could also be due to alcohol-induced damage to the heart, liver, or other organs. These doctors are in the system, and her money is still paying for all of these people who act like they are caring for her. Show business is beyond evil. And someone else added, How can they do that to her, or anyone? She has a family. Why isn't she with them? Can they simply take yo mama like that too? No, everyone can clearly see that they are slowly killing her. So who gets her money then if she can't have it? Where the law books can demonstrate that you have the right to take control of someone else's loot when the handlers are the ones afflicting her behavior, making her look insane in the membrane? This is sheer madness. But what's your take on all this? Do you think the puppet masters are really trying to silence Wendy and forcing meds on her? And do you see any parallels between Wendy's case and what Kanye went through? Let us know in the comments below and make sure you stick around for our next deep dive.